So let's do IP in the news. I'm so excited about this one. All right. Yeah. So, so guess what? The patent office issued an 11 millionth patent in the first week of May. And Elizabeth, can you read the title of the patent for us? Yes, I can. Repositioning wires and methods for repositioning prosthetic heart valve devices within a heart chamber and related systems devices and methods by Jason S. Dietering and Saravana B. Kumar at 4C Medical Technologies. So word is on the street that the patent office did not just want any patent to be the 11th millionth. No, they had to have a special patent that was especially technical, right? And so instead of a, a, a new dog leash or something, <laughs> this is they, the conjecture. This, this is, they kind of online. manipulated things behind the scenes so they could get like a super a really high, high tech, tech sounding <laughs> patent. So, yeah. um, yes. so anyway, after uh, hearing about this, uh, of course, um, we found this article and who's the article by? It's by Dean Nykirk was a professor at the University of Texas in Austin. I think he's an engineer or computer guy or something. Okay, and so what did Dean have to tell us? Well, you get to do the first one. So he pulled out these quotes predicting the future from important people from years ago. So you get to do the first and one. And we thought because this is a very technically oriented show this week, we would bring some of these to our audience. So the first one, I bet you can almost guess who this was. Everything that can be invented has been invented, right? What year was that? That was in 1899. <laughs> and that was Charles H. Duell, who was at the time, the commissioner of patents at the US Patent and Trademark Office. So he was only about um, uh, 10.5 million patents off in his <laughs> estimation, right? They only had 500,000 patents back in uh, 1899. So well, it's a little bit off there. Kenya will love this one. The wireless music box has no imaginable commercial value. Who would pay for a message sent to nobody you... in particular? <laughs> David Sarnoff's associates in response to his urgings for investment in the radio in the 1920s. <laughs> that could go for social media and everything else today, right? And here's one from Bill Gates in 1981. 640,000 ought to be enough for anybody. <laughs> 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 um, and I particularly like, so for our entrepreneurs who are listening or joining us, I particularly like this one. We don't like their sound and guitar music is on the way out. That was a quote from 1962 when Decca Recording Company rejected the Beatles. <laughs> so so if somebody tells you your idea isn't going to work or it's terrible well maybe listen to them maybe not maybe right? not right and then finally uh i have a couple here for the tech folks uh computers in the future weigh may weigh no more than 1.5 tons <laughs> 3, that, <laughs> <laughs> and that was written in popular science magazine in 1949 and then uh, here's one from Thomas Watson, who was the chairman of IBM, and he said this in 1943, I think there's a world market for maybe five computers. So anyway, so, so be careful what you get quoted on. <laughs> so, so be careful what you say. It yes. may come back to bite you on passage but profit. I do want to hear what Scott has to say. Okay. So it is time for Richard's Roundtable, and oh, we, right. we want to go around the horn here and just ask for your comments on anything that we said or any intellectual property topic that comes to mind. So Scott, why don't you start us off? Wow, 11 million patents, you know? <laughs> and like, and, and for some reason it wasn't a marketing technology patent that they didn't think was gonna be like good enough for the 11 million. I'm disappointed. We're gonna have to be in the running for the 12th millionth one. <laughs> you have to know somebody at the patent office to get that, you know, even number all the way through. But. <laughs> so, yeah, isn't that what? What was that guy? That Einstein fellow? He isn't still working there, is he? <laughs> <laughs> I heard he was a pretty tough examiner. You really had to be creative to get one past old Albert there. But um, very good, uh, Kenya. Do you have any comments? I wanted you to explain a little bit more about that 11th patent because when you were explaining it, my brain like just went into outer space because my brain's not as techy as you guys. So if you can explain it a little bit more because it had something to do with a heart valve. Like I just, I kind of got a little jumbled up there. 
Well, Kenya, that's a great question. So I think what this patent is about is, you know, physicians are developing techniques all the time doing research so that they don't have to cut people open. So I think that this is so that they can go in and adjust an artificial heart valve and all the components and wires leading to it in a less invasive procedure. So great question. It's amazing. They're very tech savvy. You know, they get the medical piece in there along with the uh, tech, tech, technology piece. So uh, patent office did a great job of kind of getting everybody uh, to like their patent, right? So, um, so that's great. Uh, Paul, do you have a question or comment? Actually, the the part about the guitar, what was that one? That seemed interesting because it was about new technology. What was that again? Could you read that? Oh, the, about them. It was about the Beatles uh, being rejected because guitar music was going out of fashion in 1962. And so we don't like their sound and guitar music is on the way out. <laughs> So that just speaks, I think that just speaks to the IP that we never know what's going to be uh, important in the future. And so a simple idea or a simple a creative concept of a guitar sound is really important to make sure you are patenting it because look what happened, right? Absolutely. Right. right. A, so, and entrepreneurs should not give up just because one jerk doesn't like what they're doing, right? Right. Right. <laughs> So yeah, there's critics everywhere. So you gotta you gotta keep pushing ahead with your passion. So Jim, did you have any thoughts? Well, I had thoughts on the 11 millionth uh, patent. I've in the past done a lot of work with the Federal Drug Administration with uh, getting all those devices approved for use. It's a long and arduous road, and I give uh, credit to the people that have that patent in place now that they work very hard to do it. No, that's that's a good point. And it's important. It helps everybody that ever has to have this type of operation, right? So absolutely, absolutely. So Liz, what are your thoughts? Well, you know, it's interesting. I get a lot of questions uh, from entrepreneurs who ask, do I need a patent? You know, is it important? It can be very expensive. It can be time consuming. So it is interesting to hear the 11 million out of how many ideas and how many entrepreneurs and how many businesses have succeeded. So, you know, I think that that's amazing and that number is huge, but also to say that that doesn't mean that everyone has to has to have a patent. And I think, you know, it's important to think about what are the times that are that a patent is really valuable and when should you forge ahead and, and just really, and I think Scott will be interesting to hear about, you know, marketing and when is it more important to kind of build a brand and get that, that get that recognition when you don't have a patent. So, um, that's been, you know, something that, that I've been thinking about as well. I typically, when I start my businesses, don't file for patent. I definitely file for trademark and copyright and all that. Um, but so, you know, curious to hear if others have filed for patents before. And of course, as Elizabeth said, the, you know, don't give up, you know, how many of us have heard no a million, 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 trillion times. And, you know, it just takes one, one yes to really get you on your way. Yeah. Right. Yeah, well, not everything's patentable, but you certainly are doing the right thing by having a trademark and protecting your brand. And I don't think we've heard from Lauren yet, have we? No, I would just uh, also point out to Liz that um, it, you have to have something that's innovative, right? right. So if you have a, a website that is selling bl blue bicycles and somebody else has a website that's selling pink bicycles, you're not going to get a patent on something like that. If you have a new innovative product, then it's something to consider. And you always want to make sure that you're not going to stumble across somebody else's patent. Because it, 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 you, if you spend a lot of time investing in your project and you find out two or three later, years later that somebody else has filed an application on something, they could block you. And so you want to make sure that that doesn't happen, even yeah. if you decide not to file the that's a great that's a great point and I think people should know how to do that check you know to to really go ahead and do that research so that is absolutely something that that everyone should think about before they start their business that's a great point so Lauren what are your thoughts well I was uh, a little bit stuck at the beginning when you said um, I didn't hear all of the quote but it was that something like everything that can be invented already has been invented or something <laughs> like that. Um, and it reminded me of Einstein's uh, definition of insanity. Um, insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting different results. 
but it reminded me in this world of patents, how people who have gone forward and created those 11 million patents weren't willing to do the same thing over and over again. One time they said, let me try it differently and then had the wherewithal to patent it. That, um, no, that's, I, that's really inspiring. I uh, love that. Can I steal it? <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> Go for it. <laughs> no, that, was, that was really great. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's absolutely true. And, um, you know, patents, uh, of course, are also a form of recognition. There's a lot of scientists, for example, who like to get patents just because it shows that they have done something novel and uh, creative. And uh, of course, large companies with large budgets file lots of patents. And so the, 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 the cost of the patent is really small. Uh, even if, so even if the, uh, the project is never fully commercialized, um, it, it, it doesn't make a difference uh, to them, but the inventor gets recognition. If you're an entrepreneur, then the patent's gonna be a larger part of your budget, right? So you have to balance that versus marketing investment versus uh, other types of investment, investment in your team and all of those sorts of things. So, but your, your point is well taken and uh, it is a badge of honor. So, all right. so we need to go to a break. So you're listening to Passage to Profit, The Inventor Show on WOR 710, The Voice of New York. We'll be right back. 